الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam Indeed the first piece of advice that is of utmost importance for myself and yourselves is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as Taqwa Allah Every one of us needs to be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remind ourselves that we are going to be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Today I would like to speak about something extremely important. We all know that there are some divine rights that have been enshrined in Islam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Firstly, as human beings and secondly, as Muslimin. We are human beings, we care for the rest of humanity. We are Muslimin, we care for the rest of the Muslims as well as humanity at large. So there are certain rights that need to be fulfilled regarding one another in particular and regarding the rest of humanity on a broader level. So the Prophet ﷺ speaks of some of these rights in various narrations. One of them, he says, Haqqul Muslimi ala al-Muslimi khams. The right of a Muslim upon another Muslim is five things. You owe the others five things they owe you five things i wish to speak about the issue of sickness and illness from among the five he says iyadatul marid to visit a person who is sick now if you take a look at it it is a duty for us to visit those who are sick but there is a way of doing it there is a sunnah method the method taught by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of visiting the sick you don't just go without etiquette at any time of the night or the day and sit for the entire evening and demand food and make it difficult. But there is a way of doing things. And there is such a great reward to take an interest in those who are sick, whether they are related to you or not. A mistake we make is we like to visit our relatives who are sick. We like to visit our friends who are sick and ill. What about those who are neither your friends nor relatives? How many of us would actually pass by for one minute and make a short dua or say a word of hope or at least visit them when you did not know them? Show the solidarity that we have amongst mankind and amongst the ummah in particular. So it's important for us to realize the reward is so high, there must be a reason. There must be a great reason. It is not something minor. Look at the Jum'ah. Today we are seated here for Salatul Jum'ah. We consider it compulsory. There is a reason. We are part of one family. There is love between us. There should be the element of caring between us. Wallahi, if you do not feel love for the brother seated next to you or regarding the sisters, for those sisters who are seated next to you, then there is something wrong with your heart. There is something wrong with your heart. No matter what, we are brothers and sisters. We should be defending one another, helping one another, reaching out to one another, assisting one another, taking care of one another in the best possible way. So much so that if we were to attend Salatul Jama'ah in the masjid five times a day, we would actually know who is not here and with good thoughts in our minds, we would want to inquire, my brother, are you okay? I did not see you at Salatul Asr. I did not see you for three Salah. Is everything well? The idea would not be to try and take account of where he goes and what he's doing and stalk. No, the idea is genuine concern. And the brother will say, you know, I haven't been feeling well. May Allah grant you cure. When you make a dua for someone, the angels say, oh Allah, give this person the same. 
So when you say, oh Allah, give them cure, the angels are asking for cure for you. Which dua is better? Subhanallah. So it is triggered by your dua. When you say something, the angels say something else. Do you know there is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu He says, when you visit the sick and ill, make a dua. So you make a dua for yourself and for them. Why? Because the malaika are saying ameen for any dua that is made in the presence of a sick person. So when you visit the sick and ill, make a lot of dua. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, La ba'sa tahurun insha'Allah. And there are so many other duas that are taught by the Prophet. ﷺ. So imagine if the reward of visiting the sick is so high, what do you think will be the reward of taking care of the sick? Many women, many men, many mothers, many fathers, many relatives, they are taking care of their children or their parents or their brothers and sisters who are sick and ill. They themselves struggle more than the sick person. Only Allah knows what they are going through. It is not a joke. It is not easy to look after someone who is sick and ill. It is a huge sacrifice. That is your Jannah. That is your paradise. That is your opportunity to get close to Allah. You look after those who are sick, no matter what sickness they have. Your child, may Allah grant cure to our children. May Allah grant cure to us and our family members and all those who are sick. When you take care of them, you have to sometimes carry them. You have to help them relieve themselves. You have to help them eat. You have to help them drink. You have to help them move. Do you think that that is going to go without a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If to visit is so rewarding, wallahi, to take care of them is Jannatul Firdaus if it is done with the correct intention by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people are granted a child who is disabled, a child who has medical conditions as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. So that they become closer to Allah. Their hearts are softened. They are the ones who will then be granted access into Jannatul Firdaus because they were occupied with something that was considered so important in a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the son of Adam, O oh son of Adam, I was sick and you did not visit me. So son of Adam will say, O oh Allah, how could I visit you when you are Rabbul Alameen? How could you be sick and I visit you? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, did you not hear of such and such a worshipper of mine who was sick? Had you visited him or her, you would have found me there. Subhanallah. Amazing. What that means is, it would remind you of me. It would draw you closer to me. We are healthy sometimes. We go to visit people who are sick and unhealthy or who are terminally ill who were at one stage healthier than us. What does that do? It reminds us very quickly to say, Subhanallah, I have good health. Let me get close to Allah. Look at this brother. Look at this sister. They were healthier than me. They were stronger than me. And today they are helpless laying in the bed. It should draw you closer to Allah. That means you went to visit them. What did you find? You found Allah. Because you did not eat, read, you did not used to read your salah. But because you saw what happened to others, it softened you to realize where you are going. We all have to die. We all have to go back to Allah. People who read Salatul Jum'ah in this place of worship, some of them have already gone. And we are all going to go. Do you think 100 years from now, we will all be sitting here? Not even 150 years from now, do you think we are going to be seated here? So this will draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah says, when you visit the sick and the ill, you realize the gift of health and it makes you do that which is in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to visit the sick. He used to pray for them. He used to make sure he gave them words of hope, not words of doom. You look at a sick man, you say, no, no, you are dying. You better start preparing. That's it. Your days are numbered over. Is that the sunnah? Not at all. No matter how sick they are, the sunnah is to give them hope. Don't worry. And another very interesting point, never ever say bad words about the doctor who is dealing with that particular patient in the presence of the patient because 
it may it may affect the heart of the patient you say you know who is treating you so the man says this doctor that doctor is terrible so many people have died you better watch out. why are you telling the patient you you need to boost the morale of the patient remember say good things give them hope inshallah give them examples of people who were in their situation who are now cured and they are walking do not give them examples of people who were in their situation and they have died so you look at the man you say sorry what sickness do you have and he tells you what sickness is no matter of time now just a matter of time you know this man went that man went that man went they had the same sickness now it's your turn that is not a Muslim's duty. It's not a Muslim to do that. A Muslim doesn't do that. We are taught, you want to follow the Sunnah, give them hope. This is why I was saying there are rules and regulations. When you visit them, make sure the timing is right. You don't pitch up in the middle of the morning or in the middle of the night and decide I'm going to sit there for two hours and you call for tetarik and everything else. No, you actually visit them short period of time, very short. At the right convenient time a lot of the times the sick and the ill they need rest that's why they are in the hospital that's why sometimes they have been given rest by the doctors and what happens because we all go to visit and we sit for hours they don't get rest they get more sick think of this sometimes you just need to send a message we are praying for you one message sometimes it's powerful it boosts the person's entire feeling and you know psychologically when they feel that they have a lot of support from a lot of people they already are half better ask the doctors they will tell you that those who psychologically feel they are winning the battle they are already winning the battle by the will of allah because allah is the curer the doctor is only a means and a very important means so my brothers and sisters remember that when we go to visit the sick and ill do not bring up controversial topics for example, a man visits his brother in the hospital and the brother is very ill and he says, you know, your wife today at home, you know what she did? She spoke like this and my brother, this is not the right time to talk about these things. You need to know what to say. Don't raise issues. The man is now in a condition where he needs good words. He needs good things. Subhanallah, sometimes a man is about to die and quickly they take a whole will and they want him to sign this document and that document. The man is about to go. It depends how sick he is. It is important for all of us to ensure that your will is in place. The minute you have some wealth, you make sure your will is in place. Don't wait until you are on your deathbed and then suddenly you realize it's too late. That's a lesson we learn. Sort out your will. Make sure you've left wealth for your children, your offspring, and so on. Whatever is there, make sure it is clear. Make sure the business you have, if it is a family business or whatever else, everything is clear from now when you are healthy. Don't wait for the time you are sick because it is an insult to the sick person for people to take to the deathbed of that person documents to sign. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen. So similarly, when we visit them, we need to make sure we don't force them to eat or to drink or to do something they don't want to do. You don't force them and you don't speak in a harsh way. Also, when a person is sick and ill, what we will find is that they will sometimes have an abrupt tone because they are in pain. They are struggling. So they might tell you, no, I don't want, please go away or please this, that. They might speak in a harsh way, not because they are harsh, but because they are in pain. It happens a lot. Sometimes old parents, if you have an elderly mother, because her bones are paining, she might become abrupt with you, your wife, your children, because, not because she's a bad person, but because she is in pain. That is why she is abrupt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and make it easy for every one of us. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us all of these things by way of example. He has done this in his life. When there is a duty between us, there is always a method to fulfill that duty. So this is why my brothers and sisters, we will visit each other. We will make sure that we do it at the right time. We will make sure we make a dua for the person and give them hope no matter what. Also, there are two types of hope. One is hope to get cured and the other is hope in the mercy of Allah if anything were to happen. So many times people are scared of death. I think all of us here, we fear death in a certain way. 
Sometimes it's because we are not ready to go according to us. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. And sometimes it's just because we don't know where, whether we are going to Jannah or not. But to have hope in Jannatul Firdaus is the quality of a Muslim. And to give others hope of Jannatul Firdaus is the quality of a Muslim. When Allah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrak bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha Allah will not forgive shirk committed but he will forgive besides that whomsoever he wishes even that verse it means shirk if you died without seeking forgiveness from it but if you sought forgiveness while you were alive from your shirk, even that will be forgiven. No harm. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The majority of them in Mecca were mushrikeen. They used to adopt shirk. They used to worship stones and sticks and trees and everything else. But when they became Muslim, the hadith says, Inna al-Islama yajubbu ma qablahu. Indeed, when you revert to Islam, it deletes your previous sins. There is another powerful hadith about Tawbah. That Tawbah has the same effect. The one who seeks forgiveness from sin is equivalent to the one who did not commit any sin. It's amazing because you asked Allah to forgive you and you changed your life. So this is what we are taught. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. We will by His will go to Jannatul Firdaus. We need to work towards it. Make sure that you don't have a green light to commit sin thinking of the mercy of Allah because that is wrong. Some people say Allah is so merciful, let me commit a sin and don't worry, I know He will forgive. That is wrong. But if you have committed a sin, then you need to know the mercy of Allah is greater than your sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. So going back to what I was saying, you talk to the person who is terminally ill by telling that person that do you know, do you know that Allah is very merciful? Even if you were to go, Allah is merciful. Now this is when they are terminally ill because you have to prepare them for the akhirah. So this is why you say, let us read together. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. For example, let them say it once, twice. Talk about it. What does it mean? Help them to seek the forgiveness of Allah and put yourself in it you know some people when they preach they preach in a way that they are on a pedestal they are holy they are very high and everyone else is very low that nowadays subhanallah people are not impacted by that because they feel look at this man he is preaching to us and he pretends like he is the prophet of allah astaghfirullah but the more effective way is when you include yourself in it to say look we all need to seek the forgiveness of allah including me we are all sinful, including me. So let us do the following. Instead of saying you do, say let us do it. You include yourself in it. I need to be forgiven just like you need to be forgiven. You may be better than me and it's a fact in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why when you are speaking to someone who is sick, it is even more important to include yourself. Look, one day we will all return to Allah. Why don't we seek the forgiveness of Allah? And we have hope in the mercy of Allah. I always say, that when you start your day, you start your day by reading the Quran, by seeking the forgiveness of Allah every single day, even if it means only for five minutes. Why? Because one day you will die. If you have that habit, then the day you will die, you would have started the day with the Quran. You would have started the day with one minute of dua, istighfar. Do you really think that Allah is going to throw you into hellfire when your day started by saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. So the angels have written that the day this man died early morning, he said, Oh Allah, forgive me. And the day this woman died early morning, she said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah This is why we say, my brothers, my sisters, if you are dedicated, it's not difficult to earn the pleasure of Allah. Why? Every day. Get into a habit of doing some deeds, even if they mean small. The best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even if they are little. My brothers and sisters, get used to this. So, it is also important for us to remind the sick person of the virtue of being sick. That is something important. To tell the sick person 
You know, when you are sick, your sins are forgiven. When you are sick, you bear sabr, you will get closer to Allah. When you are sick, subhanallah, this will happen, that will happen. This is the virtue of being sick. What does that mean? It means that now that you are sick, don't become hopeless. Look at the good side of it. Many of us, we don't make dua to Allah. We are not interested in salah. When we get sick, we quickly make dua for the first time in our lives. We quickly come to read salah. We make friends with the imam and the, the sheikh in the area because we are sick. What about before you were sick? So that was the virtue of being sick. It brought you closer to Allah and it made you closer to the rest of the people who are also closer to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Also, what is important for us to know is the issue of sabr and patience. You need to know how to speak to the person. You need to know how to communicate in a positive way. Think very carefully with the words before you utter them. Don't ever make them hopeless regarding cure and always grant them hope. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I would also like to mention that those who are doctors and those who take care, who are nurses or even just the staff at a medical facility such as this one that we are at today. Wallahi, your reward is with Allah. Even if you have taken your salary, some people say, if I took money, I don't get a reward. No, you took your salary, but you dedicated your time, your effort, your expertise towards helping people who were sick to achieve the cure. Allah will reward you for every goodness that comes from that person as a result of them being cured, even though the curer was Allah, because you made an effort. That is the thing. When you help someone to come to the masjid by giving them a lift, you get the full reward of whatever goodness they do in the masjid. If you have done, for example, a surgery to someone's eye to help them to see, you will get a full reward of whatever Quran they have read thereafter. Full reward because you help them. If you have assisted someone with a difficult heart, for example, and now their blood is pumping properly, they are healthy, they can fulfill salah, they do their ibadah and all good deeds and so on, you will get a reward for that. And if they do bad deeds, Allah is too merciful. He will not give you as a secondary person the sin of their sins. Allah says, I will only give you the goodness of their good. But I will not give you the sin of their sins because you did not encourage those sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. That's the mercy of Allah. So even those who are working accountants and the staff who are recording and the secretaries or receptionists, the reward is immense and intense. So bear Allah in mind because to work with sick people is not easy. You need to have a strong heart and a strong mind to see people who pass away sometimes, to see people in health that are so weak and frail that it's so delicate to see little babies struggling and suffering. It's not easy. My brothers and sisters, I hope that these few words would have helped and I hope that they will serve as an encouragement for myself and yourselves. There is a lot that needs to be covered when it comes to this duty that we have. It is a divine right, remember that, to visit the ill, to visit the sick. And the day you are sick and ill, you will feel like you are part of a massive family. Everyone is concerned about me. Imagine representative coming from the masjid to see you, to say, we in the masjid were remembering you. We have come here just to say, may Allah grant you a cure. Subhanallah. How do you feel when you know that in the masjid they are all making dua for you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa to those who are ill. May Allah grant cure to those who are sick and ill, not just today and not just here, but anywhere across the globe and all the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله My brothers and sisters be conscious of Allah be conscious of the day that you are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prepare for that day 
Prepare for the day by increasing your istighfar and by increasing the seeking of forgiveness from Allah. For indeed, anyone who wants success, they need to seek the forgiveness of Allah. It is only and solely with the mercy of Allah that we will enter Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah grant us forgiveness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. Brothers and sisters, we have been instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings and salutations upon the most blessed of all creation, the highest in rank of all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, he was the one who came to us with all this goodness and he was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the hadith, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, whoever sends blessings and salutations upon me one time, Allah will bless them tenfold as a result. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that indeed Allah and his angels send blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You too, O oh believers, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im. على عبدك ورسولك محمد أفضل الخلق وأكرم الرسل وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم ارض عنهم وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين وارحمنا إذا صرنا إلى ما صاروا إليه اللهم انصر المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم إنك أنت أعلم بالظالم والمظلوم فانصر المظلوم على الظالم يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد ورؤساءها وسلاطينها اللهم احفظهم جميعا اللهم احفظهم وأيدهم لما تحب وترضى يا قوي يا عزيز يا إله العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة يرحمكم الله عز وجل